today in our program, we're heading east. Why do Muscovites love Asian cuisine? I want something special, something you don't eat every day. The Danovsky Market is a fashionable gastronomic space in Moscow with a diverse menu. You make an order, you go to the cooks, they construct your soup right in front of you. You can see everything put into it. Great fish, mapo tofu and other dishes of traditional Chinese cuisine. It's a very special dish because it comes from Sichuan. This means it's spicy. Moreover, it must have a sweet and sour component. In China, there are many shades of a spicy taste. How is authentic Peking duck cooked? The wood is very important and carefully selected. Usually either cherry or sandalwood is used. And what is the right way to eat it? We dip it into sugar. It's the first slice, which is going to be sweet. This means our life is going to be sweet. Dozens of cafes with various cuisine under the same roof. This new gastronomic trend in the restaurant business has become very popular in Moscow over the past several years. In a short space of time, the Russian capital has come a long way from having small food courts and shopping centers to now having some of the grandest food malls in Europe. Old markets and vacant premises of former warehouses are being transformed into gastro markets. The Danilovsky market has become one of the main attraction points for true foodies. Danilovsky market is one of the first gastro markets in Moscow. It opened in 2015 on the sides of the old market. Today, in this trendy gastronomic space, you can not only buy fresh products, but also try the cuisine from many countries around the world. Let's go and see for ourselves. The Danilovsky market is situated near Tulska metro station, just a 20 minute drive from the city center. It's one of the oldest markets in Moscow. This year it turned 57, but nothing here reminds you of its age, nor of its Soviet past. This is a real gastronomic world and it's very large. The center of this old market has been rebuilt several times. Now we see that in the center of the hall, there is a shopping mall with fresh produce and food and around it, dozens of cafes with a wide variety of cuisine. Vasilisa Ramsey grew up in the United States of America. However, she's been living in Moscow for more than five years. Nearly every seller at the Danilovsky market knows this petite young lady. She comes here for fresh produce several times a week. Do you have any particular favorite uh, corners of this market, places that you love to visit? Um, so if it's in terms of um, the food that I would buy, then it's definitely dairy because uh, as I grew up in the US, we have Greek yogurt and I mean, very basic dairy products, I, I would so say. You miss all those proper really Russian do, right, dairy products, which you can't right, get like in America. Farmer, farmer right. produce and especially the tvorok, the cottage cheese, because I, I guess you can, you have such a big variety of um, dishes you can prepare from the tvorok here. Right. And you have the fresh uh, sour cream, which I mean, we have sour cream, right, in the U.S., but it's I don't think it's the same. Yeah, yeah as there's it nothing. Is yeah, here. cottage cheese and sour cream do not compare mm, to no. smetana and right. spadol. Exactly, and kefir as well. Of course, not the same as in the states. Now, do you have a particular favorite time of the day coming here? I love coming here in, early in the morning, right. just when the market opens, because. You kind of see the market awakening, mm -hmm. so uh, you get your favorite cup of coffee. You get, say, a croissant. That's because it's you know they're fresh right in the morning and they're even a little warm, and you can just sit and watch everybody, you know, put their veggies out, put their fruits out, put put all you know put all the, their the fish out and. And I just don't know, it's very, it's very cozy. I would say it's yeah, cozy. Yeah. There are 39 farmer stalls in the market. 
Here you can buy meat and fish, exotic berries and fruit, nuts and other products. But it is not the produce, rather the delicious food stalls that draw many people. There are cafes and bistros along the whole perimeter of the market. Today, there are over 40 restaurant concepts with a variety of national cuisines represented. Since I was a child, I preferred vegetarian and vegan cuisine. I don't like meat or fish. This is the reason why I've found myself here. Well, I prefer oriental cuisine, so today we're at Danilovsky Market with you. If you look around, you'll see an Armenian stall, a Dagestan stall, Georgian food. There's lots of meat, greens and vegetables. I like Chinese cuisine because I've been working with China for a long time. When I go to a food court, I look for Chinese food and I compare it with the way they cook it in China. In general, I want something special, something that you don't eat every day. Regular meat, fried pilmini, soup. I want something new. Where can I find it? At a food court. Here, a team of Vietnamese cooks in front of guests prepares street food with fresh ingredients, including the most popular dish for which hundreds of visitors come to this cafe every day, the traditional pho bo soup. Are all these here for pho bo? Yes, all of the ingredients are for pho bo. Veal, beef, lime, greens. Here the ingredients for your soup are selected right in front of the customers. The basis of the dish, the broth, is cooked for eight hours in these 150-litre pots. Muscovites are so fond of the classic dish of the Vietnamese street food that in one day, guests consume nearly 600 litres of traditional pho bo. That is for 150-litre pots. Now it's clear why they have 150-litre pots. It's the biggest soup I think I've ever seen. Yes, excellent. More than 50 types of hummus, tabula salad, baked eggplants and sweet pepper. You can buy all these at the Tangineria, an ethnic bistro of Moroccan cuisine with halal food. Here they cook dishes of stewed lamb, beef and chicken. For dessert they serve baklava and mahancha pies. Chef Moussa Amhaik welcomes the guests with aromatic Moroccan tea. Here we have green tea and fresh mint. We make it Moroccan style. Yes, this is done by someone who has experience. Taste it, it's delicious. We're always happy to see you. Mm, the smell is very good. This is authentic Moroccan tea. You can quickly move from Morocco to China. Literally several meters away, cooks at the Three Ducks offer us dishes of Shanghai regional cuisine. On the menu are chipped cucumbers, spicy pig ears, udon noodles, fried rice with vegetables, and of course, Peking duck. You know, if we talk about the whole technical process from the very beginning, it takes about six to eight hours to prepare the duck for cooking. It's marinated and glazed with a special sugar solution which gives it the crispy skin. Then it goes into the oven. Then it comes to us and we let it rest for a bit. All these processes take place at another kitchen. Every morning the duck arrives here fresh and we roast it throughout the day. Chinese cuisine is considered to be one of the most popular in the world. However, it is almost impossible to taste authentic Chinese dishes at Moscow street food stores. It's because traditional Asian recipes are often adapted for the European palate. For example, they add fewer flavorings to make the dish less spicy. And the ducks bought for making the popular dish come from the farms of the Russian city of Saratov. Peking duck is one of the most popular dishes in China. But in order to try it, you don't have to fly all the way to China. We just arrived at one of the big Moscow restaurants. They say this is the place to try the best Peking duck in this city. Mm -hmm. 
Experts say that Chinese restaurants outside the People's Republic of China are divided into two categories, one for the Chinese and the other for everybody else. At JZ Peking Duck Restaurant's Fet Noi Boulevard, you can meet both Chinese and the Russians. The first come here for traditional dishes they eat at home, and the latter are here for the opposite, for the Chinese exotics. The main idea was to offer a non-adapted cuisine. We have seven guest specialists from China. They are highly qualified cooks. Each of them heads his own department. There's a cook who does cold dishes, one for hot dishes, and the chef. He's also Chinese. As you can see, it's all authentic. JZ Peking Duck Restaurant Moscow was opened a year ago. This space has an area of 2,000 square meters and flashy, authentic Chinese decor throughout its three floors. Here, they can feed 320 people simultaneously. We did our best to ensure that each guest feels quite comfortable here. Some people come for a quick lunch, it's on the first floor, to hold meetings quickly and get back to the office. The second floor is like a restaurant, there's a banquet hall there. On the third floor, we have enclosed booths, it's very private, intimate. If the guests want, they can have privacy and even anonymity if they wish. Each of the 13 VIP halls has its own design and can fit a different number of guests. You can hold business meetings here or sit with your family at a traditional Chinese table. In China, there's a dish called hogo. Let me show it to you. These plates are heated. There are personal pots with broth. There are pots for the whole company. But this one is for one person. Everything has been brought from China. Tableware, carpets, lamps, chopsticks. The restaurant offers authentic cuisine of five Chinese provinces. So we've arrived here at the kitchen where we're going to prepare Chinese food. But before entering the kitchen, I must put on a hat and a protective overall. Right, now I'm ready, let's go to the kitchen. The process of cooking meals in the kitchen never stops, despite the presence of the film crew. After all, all orders need to be served to the guests as soon as possible. On weekdays, there are eight to 10 cooks working here. What makes Chinese cuisine special is that there is practically no pre-cooked food. According to the rules of the Celestial Empire, all dishes are cooked to order. As for spices and various sauces, well, here you can see a huge number of them. Delicious. The cooks prepare noodles, make dumplings, and fry products in a wok. The Chinese wok is considered to be one of the most efficient cooking tools. In a wok, oil reaches its cooking temperature in just 15 seconds. At the high heat, meats and vegetables don't have time to lose their juices. As a result, they always remain juicy and rich in taste. The main person in the kitchen is the chief chef, Yuan Bin Tao. Yuan Bin Tao was born in the Chinese province Shanxi, in the city of Xi'an, where he attended a culinary institute. After completion, he began working at restaurants and five-star hotels. In May 2019, he came to Moscow for work. Well, what dish are we going to cook today? Today, we are going to cook grape fish. I'm going to show how to dress the fish properly. First, we cut the head. Then, we precisely cut the fillet and remove the bones. It's a pike perch. The next step is cutting the fillet. Now we need to wash the fish and dry it properly. Now we are preparing the marinade. We take one egg, salt, ground white pepper, and other spices. Now we need to dip the fish into the marinade. 
Then we roll it evenly in starch. We also dip the head of the fish. Our fish is ready to be fried. Grape fish is fried in a wok. For this, you need to take about five liters of oil. It takes just three to four minutes to cook it. Then the chef puts the filet and the head of the fish on a plate, pours a specially prepared sweet and sour sauce and garnishes it with fresh greens, peas and pine nuts. Alexei Maslov, professor, PhD in history, orientalist, will help us understand the intricacies of cooking the next dish. He is the one who knows practically everything about China. We're going to cook mapu tofu. It's a very special dish. It comes from Sichuan. This means it must be spicy. Moreover, it must be tartly spiced because in China there are very many shades of various tastes. And most importantly, we begin with the fine cutting of tofu into small squares. Then we will pour a special sauce onto it. Now we are going to heat all of this so that it is hot and spicy at the same time. A sauce for mapo tofu is cooked with a mixture of pepper, ginger, garlic, green onion and marinated meat. The chef keeps the full list of ingredients and their proportions a secret. Just five minutes and the dish is ready. We've created what is arguably the most popular Sichuan dish. It's eaten by every Sichuan resident and foreign guest alike. Sichuan is the biggest province in China. Its population is 300 million people, and it's known for having the spiciest dishes. Now it's very important to cover it and serve it hot. Grape fish and mapo tofu are ready to be served, but that's not all. At the beginning of our program, we promised to tell you how one of our star dishes of Chinese cuisine, Peking duck, is cooked. Master Lu Dianhua cooks it in a separate, specially designated area. Pre-marinated duck is cooked for about 80 minutes in a special oven. There are good reasons for the choice of wood. Usually they use cherry or sandalwood or other trees. Therefore, the duck can have various aromas. It should look like burned honey. That's why it is so brown. It is wrong if the duck is totally dark or very light. Not every duck can be called Peking duck. In China, there are only two farms that are licensed to raise these ducks. All other ducks are considered counterfeit. They are not authentic. And these ducks should be only fed organic food. After the duck is taken out of the oven, the master places it on a special cart and begins to slice it right in front of the guests. Thus, he demonstrates that he does everything according to the old canons, observing the traditions of his country. The duck is sliced into 108 small pieces. It's a sacred number for China, because Buddha had 108 disciples. Each slice should be the same size, because it is considered that if one piece is bigger and the second one is smaller, this will offend someone during the meal. The duck is sliced and ready to be served. Now it's time to tell you how to correctly eat it. There's another tradition. Mm -hmm. Before serving the most important dishes in China, especially dishes like Peking duck and squirrel fish, you should strike the gong because it drives away evil spirits. And then the dish not only penetrates the stomach, but also the heart. So here you are, Michael. No, 
Well, now the most important item, a round table. It's very important because the word duck in Chinese has a communal connotation in its meaning. That is, it is derived from the word community, meaning that all should share the same food. We will begin not with the whole duck, but with the skin. We should cleanse our palates. I suggest that we take a slice of duck and dip it only into sugar. The first slice should be sweet, then our life will be sweet too. The duck is served with thin wheat pancakes, leek and cucumber cut into thin sticks, carrot, cream sauce and other additional ingredients. Europeans usually put the food on the plate and then do everything else, but I will do it like the Chinese. Yes, good, let's do it the Chinese way. They place the duck on the hand. Now we take several slices from the top, we dip them into the soy sauce, they usually put two or three slices, we put cucumbers, cucumbers cut some of the spice. This is garlic, this is not a spicy garlic, it gives another component to the flavor. Carrot. Carrot gives us a slight sweetness. We can put this one. It's called ginger oil. Now we carefully wrap it with chopsticks. We make a small envelope. That's it. Now you can eat it. Authentic Peking duck. On the table, there are the two other dishes that we cooked with the chef of JZ Peking Duck Restaurant. This fish has many names. It is often called grape fish. In China, they call it fish in sweet and sour sauce. It has one more name, squirrel fish, because these parts stick out as if the squirrel's hair is standing on end. In general, very different types of fish are used. Quite often it's carp, sometimes it's pike perch, but first, let's taste it. This is another Beijing dish. It's also delicious. Here, you should experience several flavors at once. Sweet, slightly sour and salty. Well, we're going to finish with the fish. Yes, it was so delicious and very beautiful. Beautiful, yes, amazing. Now we are moving to a very special Chinese dish, which is called dofu. Many Russians say tofu, but the correct name is actually dofu. Dofu is a soybean curd. It is also very healthy because it's almost 100% protein. And this protein is quickly absorbed. This is the reason why many people say that you can abstain from meat and only eat dofu. I lived in a Buddhist monastery for two years. There they used to say that dofu is Buddhist meat. It is forbidden for Buddhists to eat meat, but you can cook dofu in such a way that it will seem like meat. However, this dofu is special. It's from Sichuan, and it is called mapo dofu. Mapo literally means pockmarked face, a face with spots. They say that a very poor woman lived in the province of Sichuan. She wasn't beautiful because her face was pockmarked. She wanted very badly to get married and she got married, but her husband died very quickly. So she became a widow. Nobody wanted to marry her. She wasn't beautiful and she had nothing to eat. And people gave her only leftover food. On one side of her house, there lived a man who cooked tofu. On the other, a man who cooked meat dishes, and they gave her their leftover food. So, one day, she decided to combine two types of food. She put roasted spicy meat into dofu, and she roasted it for a long time until the aroma was pleasing. Then she ate it. But then, smelling this delicious aroma, the neighbors came running. At first, she gave them food for free. Later, she started selling it for money. This is the reason why this dish is still called pockmarked old woman's dofu. You should eat it very carefully because it's spicy. The most important thing for a Chinese person is to take pleasure in conversation. There are always two main questions to be discussed with a new acquaintance. The first one is, where do you come from? From which province? It's important that you talk about your family. The second question is, what kind of food do you eat? Any Chinese person, rich or poor, famous or unknown, knows his or her history very well.
Today we've had a really tasty program. I've learned a lot about the history of China through its cuisine, and I've learned how and where real Peking duck is prepared in Moscow. This is the program Capital Ideas Life. I'm Mike Gibson. See you in the next program.